Hi, this is Mr. Adams from Midwood High School, and this is a video on the Chatelier's Principle. Okay, um, the Chatelier's Principle, before we talk about it, we must discuss first um, equilibrium. Now, equilibrium simply happens is that when you have a reversible reaction, okay, and when the forward and the reverse process processes are at equal rates. Now, you must be careful because even though the rates are equal, in terms of concentration guys okay the concentrations will be constant okay so the concentrations are not equal they tend to be constant so you must make that distinction now we know that um we talked about this in class um equilibrium came in two flavors okay it came in dynamic and it came in the flavor of static now dynamic equilibrium simply refers to some type of movement all right so you're moving back and forth and we also discussed the fact that any phase change represents dynamic equilibrium. For example, you can have boiling and condensing happening at the same time, moving back and forth at equal rates. And also, um, we see this type of dynamic equilibrium at saturation in solutions. Okay. Um, static equilibrium has no movement. There's a balance, but there's no actual movement. So, you know, that's what it is. All right. Let me move on. Now, Le Chatelier's principle simply states that if you have a, a system or a reaction at equilibrium okay and you apply some type of stress to it it will shift to relieve that stress so we have a typo here to relieve that stress not relieve that stress all right now for example we have a reaction over here now we had this reaction in your homework reading um in terms of the Haber process in your textbooks now notice once again over here guys we have the concentrations and they are constant and constant concentrations represent equilibrium now what we're gonna what's gonna happen guys is we will add some H2 alright and that will cause stress okay now you may ask what well, stress stress is any change in temperature concentration or pressure now pressure just works for gas we'll talk about that in a second now in this particular reaction guys okay we notice that the um hydrogen value spikes up because we added more but what's going to happen over time we added more hydrogen the hydrogen will eventually go down because it's it's reacting more with the nitrogen so we're having more frequency of collisions more effective collisions and eventually you will make more NH3 so you notice your NH3 okay is going up right and notice that the N2 is going down the N2 is going down because it's reacting more with the uh, H2 so this that's why H2 also is going down right here now what's going to happen eventually is equilibrium will be reestablished and you have your constant concentrations now guys anytime you add okay material or heat you add heat or material okay what's going to happen the shift will go to the side to the, which is opposite opposite of that addition and anytime you remove material all right the shift will go to the side where the removal took place now once again we're going to do a couple of examples with that so if it sounds a bit convoluted no problem all right so if you add the shift will go to the opposite side if we remove the shift will go to the side of removal. Now for gases, when you increase pressure, the shift will go to the side with a lower number of moles of gas. So your equation must have gas somewhere in it. It could be on the re reactant side, it could be on the product side, it can be on both sides, but your equation must have gas in it for pressure to work. And one more thing, when you have shift, either to the right or to the left, wherever the shift goes to people, all right the things on that side will increase in concentration all right so what's going to happen we'll go to our next slide and we'll analyze a uh, question all right now based on what we just discussed um, i want you guys to pause the video and uh, you do these guys a through f and see if you can figure out which direction the equilibrium will shift to okay um we have a couple of problems here okay in relation to this equation all right and they're asking us which direction the equilibrium will shift to because once you figure out which direction equilibrium shift to you can determine 
what goes up in concentration and what will go up what will go down in concentration now the first thing in a we are decreasing or removing dihydrogen sulfide all right so this guy right here okay this guy right here h2s is dihydrogen sulfide now when we remove that if we go back to our rule all right in terms of removal all right the shift will go to the side of removal okay so we look at the question carefully we have our reactant side we have our product side we're removing h2s so the shift will go to the left all right the shift goes to the left and if the shift goes to the left what's going to happen we go back and we look at this rule over here whatever to the left on the left will start to increase all right so what's happening we removed h2s that was a stress the reaction will shift to the left to create more h2s and it will make more ch4 so your ch4 concentration and your h2s concentration will increase okay that was the first one all right moving on to b increase in pressure on the system now in terms of pressure right we must look at a g word we must look at gas and number of moles of gas so we look on the left hand side the reactant side we we'll notice there's one mole over here because there's no coefficient so we assume it's one and we look over here there's two moles and we notice that one plus two gives us three moles on the reactant side three moles of gas on this side we have one mole plus four moles so one plus four gives us five moles of gas so if we are increasing pressure and we flip back for a second and we see that if you increase pressure it's going to shift to the side with the lower number of moles of gas okay we notice that it will shift also to the left all right so it shifts to the left if we increase the pressure on the system now what's going to happen when they shift to the left it will make more h2s it will make more ch4 methane okay so that's number that's b okay and get rid of these guys okay next one increase the temperature of the system now when you're doing temperature you treat temperature as if it was a reactant or product based on the fact whether the reaction is exothermic or endothermic okay now we look at our reaction we notice that we see heat okay in kilojoules or kilocalories or they could put just heat it's on the product side the reaction is producing heat or making heat this reaction is exothermic all right so we're increasing the temperature so you go to this side and you add in more heat all right now what's going to happen is the reaction will shift to the left okay so if we increase the temperature in the system the reaction will shift to the left okay and once again these guys will go up in concentration so for what we do have we have them on basically three shifts to the left for a b and c right okay so we're going to move on okay so we'll clear this up a bit okay and move on now the next question d is asking what happens when we increase the concentration of carbon disulfide so we find carbon disulfide it's right here you dump in more carbon disulfide all right the reaction will shift to the left all right so notice we have four shift to the left all right so the h2s and the ch4 will go up in concentration all right so as you figure it out okay it's very simple okay so we're moving on to e now e what are we doing we are decreasing we are taking away methane so you have to know what methane is right so methane is ch4 now we're removing ch4 that's a stress okay now what's going to happen is when we remove methane let's go back to our rule okay removal it will shift to the side of removal right so what's going to happen when we remove methane the shift will go to the left again okay so we got one oh goodness one two three four shift to the left all right okay and was it five shift to the left all right now one more decrease the temperature of the system okay let's look at that guy all right 
now our heat is on this side over here okay if we take away heat remove heat okay we look at our rule again if we remove okay it will shift to the side of removal all right so when we look at that the shift will go to the right okay the shift will go to the right now what's going to happen when we shift to the right these guys will increase so what's going to happen our cs2 will go up and our h2 will go up so once again folks um these reactions are very easy to interpret you find your reactant side you find your product side you figure out what you're doing to the system remember that pressure only works for gas and you go from there um once again hard work plus sacrifice equals success this is a brief video on the chatelier's principle okay equal rates and constant concentration and um study 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 and i'll see you guys soon